Hello guys and welcome to amabiker.com and today we have something very beautiful with us a very macho looking bike from Honda this is the Honda CB300R cue in the intro So first things first, let's talk about the looks and uh, the dimensions. So in the pictures that you would have seen out on the internet or if you have seen the bike already, it might look macho and quite big. It definitely looks still looks macho in real, but the bike is actually quite compact. In fact, it is so compact that you sit on it and the rear section almost feels non-existent. It's really beautiful, not so great for the pillion, but definitely as a rider, you definitely feel the bike is so compact and very nimble. That said, there is also this feeling that some of you might feel that it's too short and a sort of bike is, you know, very uh, beautiful beautiful and there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the front the, the USD fork, the tank screw shroud, the radiator and the, the beautifully sculpted tank but it you know, sort of finishes off fast but I personally feel that looks good it's a very compact it's meant to be a city a street bike city bike you know for, for the urban commute and it's not exactly meant for a pillion I mean, you can have a pillion once in a while but you can see the section is quite small the series section is quite small but it's mostly for your laptop bag uh, let's talk about the handling now since we already talked about this compact nature it is as beautiful in its handling as it looks it is super nimble you can just get on it and it's got a very short turning radius even honda claims that as one of its key features in its urban credentials that you can use it in the city very easily and you know take it all around without feeling that much pressure and it's so easy to ride another key thing to say is that it's quite light it's got about once 47 7 kg curb weight which makes it one of the lightest in a segment its direct rivals would probably be the duke 390 and bmw g310r so in that way it's definitely quite lighter than both those machines let's talk about the engine now now so the engine on this is even though it's called the CB300R, is actually a 286cc engine. Produces just about 30 PS of power and just about 27 nm of torque. So it's a good improvement over what the CBR250R was because basically it's the same engine. The bore is the same. What they have done is they have reworked on the stroke of the engine. So it produces some more power than what the CBR250R produced. And the engine and the whole bike feels very familiar. The sound, everything feels very familiar. The refinement level so definitely good when you come the starter immediately the first thing is like hey this is a cbr isn't it the cbr 250 yeah, so that's the sort of feel you get but the good thing is that now it produces more power about 4 bhp more than the cbr and it's got much more torque so what that means is you have a more tractable engine in different conditions like we said honda has focused this for the urban conditions the city conditions that's your daily commute so in that way having a lot of torque is really helpful but one grouse that i had is that the gearing ratios is still very similar to that of the cbr 250r which means you have to be a little bit busy with the gearbox especially you know in, in city traffic where you need to slow down it will almost always pull in second gear once you you know st slow down for a speed breaker but you mostly have to slot into first every once in a while saying that you know even though you have so much torque maybe a bit uncomfortable but i think it's something you just need to get used to coming to how this engine really performs zero to 100 comes in at about seven seconds it will do the 120 cruise just about 7000 rpm that's a pretty good speed and definitely it'll do speeds about 140 very easily we took it to 140 but uh, we haven't taken it further up there's no need to for a bike like this but i'm sure it'll do with a lighter rider 150 and maybe even 160 easily if you you know push it hard Equipment wise, it's really beautiful to see that, you know, they have given the USD forks at front. It's from Showa and it is adjustable. I believe it's seven step adjustable. There is also preload adjustable. That's pretty good stuff. Equipment wise, the meter up front is 
it's pretty basic but misses out on some key things like for example i wish it had a gear indicator that would have been really helpful and one important thing is probably a side stand sensor because most bikes nowadays don't even start if the side stand is down probably even a light at the front dash or the side stand would have been really helpful and one weird thing or something that you need to watch out for is that the horn and the indicator switches are not at the conventional spot so it is similar to what we have seen on the previous generation i'm not sure of the current generation cbr 650f so when you're looking for the indicator you find the horn you're looking for the horn you find the indicator so that's something we had to get used to i don't know why it's necessary to change that it's it's something very basic every bike has the same in that way but again that's a very small thing you can get used to it like that. led headlights they're pretty good i'm always very skeptical of led headlights as i'm yet to see something that really lights up the road and not disturb people as well but th these are good they light up quite well of course they are lost in heavy lights but they do the job pretty well one of the best out there one thing i forgot to mention is of course the mileage which again is quite good even though we've been pushing it we've been getting about 30 consistently in fact most of the time the meters up front was showing 32 kmpl even though we were like really pushing it and always keeping the revs high the engine character of course one thing i need to say is that the bottom end is decent but it really comes alive after the 5 6 thousand rpm mark you can really feel the grunt and it drives freely all the way to 9 10 k rpm and we want to keep it in that band like above 5 thousand rpm to really have fun on this bike and when you rev it it feels the bike really coming alive but that's it compared to other bikes it has got a very friendly nature the engine has got a very friendly nature you never intimidated by it it's very smooth and there is no jumpy nature to the bike so i think for a lot of riders will find it comfortable even though the bike looks macho and big the engine character and the way once you sit on it how the bike feels is that it's very light and easy to ride typical honda characteristics for the machine Coming to the braking, it's got pedal disc at both ends. Uh, the braking character is more on the not so sharp bite. It's a very progressive feel. So this bike again is not intimidating in the braking feel as well. So that's a good thing. But I honestly, I personally like a sharper initial bite. Coming to the handlebars, it's got a very nice, beautiful handlebars. Again, adding to its street credentials, which thanks to its quite steep brake angle and the shorter wheelbase, you get nice movement to move it around. And it's very nimble in the city as well. Now coming to the ground clearance. So it's about 151 mm. So it's not the highest out there, but 151 is decent enough uh, for most of what the, the troublesome speed, break, speed breakers we have over here. Maybe with the pillion it might scrape those you know the very scientifically made ones but in most cases it should be fine and even for basic touring one free one is lengthy on road touring basically Coming to build quality, now since it's a CKD, build quality is top notch everywhere. Maybe there are small bits and pieces where I think maybe things would have been better, but overall I think it's really high up there with the best. One thing I need to talk about is also that this bike for the braking, it's got dual channel ABS, but it's got something called as the IMU as well. It's called an inertial measurement unit. So what it does, it factors in the uh, position of the bike in terms of lean angle when you brake hard you know is, is the vehicle more biased forward it factors all in these uh, details while applying the dual channel abs so it's not as sophisticated as something you see in the motor gp bikes or the top spec leader class machines but it definitely is a welcome addition pricing wise like i said since it's a ckd it is quite priced higher than what we expected it to be but when you think about what competition offers maybe you know there's a lot of punch or more power or uh, stuff offered by the competition but this is a more friendly and easier to ride bike so basically anybody can get on it and you know comfortable immediately and there's no heat thrown at you it's really comfortable and the suspensions are on the softer side it is an overall comfortable ride maybe seats are a bit harder and again then those are things you can work on and it's not uncomfortable overall tank capacity is 10 liters so again for a city bike when you say tank capacity 10 liters it's pretty decent because since the bike returns a decent mileage seeing a range of about 300 kilometers which is again pretty decent overall i I think it's a pretty beautiful machine. It's very easy to ride, friendly to ride, and the Michelin tires, street sport, they're decent, it's proven, and we've been using it for many years on different bikes. It's been a good swap option for a lot of bikes in this segment. So overall, I think it's a beautiful bike, a bit pricey, but I quite like what it offers. Uh, like, I keep repeating this because it's a very friendly bike. You can just get on it and uh, feel very comfortable. It's a very stylish bike for that matter, a big head turner. So overall, uh, it's a beautiful machine, and uh, I'd like to know what you think about it. And uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in a comment below and uh, I'll get back to you right away. Thank you for watching and hey, if you like content like this, do consider subscribing to our channel.